Hello, Baya Bota, Baba Van, Baba Venege Kai. Me no go view wage in the size of car. Me go ni pon ye doctor guname. Today I want to share something with all of us. I want to talk to you about something very, very special and personal to me. Why is this very special and personal? The only way we can make our land great again, the only way we can make our great Bini kingdom great again, is when we all start truly assessing the nature of God. Without mm -hmm. our deep understanding of the true nature of God, there will always be all this division, there will always be all these separations, and there will always be mm -hmm. all this chaos. Mm -hmm. But our deep understanding of the nature of God, good evening, is what can help us as a people to grow. It's what can help us as a people to expand. It's what can help us as a people to unite. So the secret still lies behind that secret knowledge of what God really is. And that's why we are going to talk about that this evening. So please try and share it. I am taking my my evening walk. I'll be making it very fast before uh Edeki Amu where yeah. So just try and share it and invite people. It is very important that we all understand that the true nature of God is love. The true nature of God is love. Love is God and God is love you see the word is in between that two words is represent in this case the same e is that letter I s in this case mm -hmm. means alike is in this case no difference which means God, love, is the same thing. Love and God is the same thing. There is no separation from both of them. So as a people, we must know this. Mm -hmm. Not just knowing it like knowing one, two, three. No. Knowing this means in a way that we must understand it. We must digest it, we must breathe this, and we must live with this. Why is this important? You can't look for God when you don't really have love. You can't accept the opinion of your fellow brothers when you don't really have love. So love becomes the key. Love becomes the password to assess that infinite emotion, which is so for we as a people to grow understand that the true nature of God is love. So instead of kneeling down. Doing rituals and sacrifice to God 
to make the land beautiful or to make your life settle. Practice more love. Give out more love. Give out more of those things that are within you that you share only within yourself. Share it more. Because why is this important? You see the word God, that letter they gave you, G-O-D. God now. God is not a, a subject or a statue or a figure. God mm -hmm. is not a man or a woman. This is not something, this is not something, ah, good evening, right, ah, nice to see you. This is not something, or uh, this is not something that you can attribute to an object, mm -hmm. or you can attribute to a structure. The word God is like a frequency, and this frequency is the same energy, that governs all the universe, that governs all everything you know as life. So understanding that God is not one man who sit down somewhere with white beards or one woman who sits down somewhere with big breasts. If you understand that God is none of this, is what will help you start growing into the full awareness and the consciousness of yourself. Why is this important? When you know that God is not a man, then you will start asking, then where is God? Who is God? And how can I really have my own direct contact to God? When this is from within you, that's the moment your inner growth starts. That's the moment where your spirit is maturing. That's the moment where your mind starts expanding beyond beliefs, beyond limitations, beyond what society has structured you to follow. Your mind starts breaking out from all those bosses. That moment your mind starts breaking out from those bosses, that's where the full awareness of what God really is starts coming. And what is that that God really is that we start coming? Understanding that God is not a man or a woman or a man or a boy or a girl. Understanding this will draw questions and curiosity to your life, to your mind. And that curiosity right there is beautiful because that's where the answers, the real answers start coming from. So if God is not a man, it's not a woman, it's not a boy, it's not a thing, it's not an object, what is God then? What is God? And why do we need God? If it's not something you can just say, Ah, this is it, I ho I'm holding him or I'm holding it. So what is it? Why? These are beautiful questions. And these are questions that the answers can only come to you when you have a complete open mind to view things from different angles without judgments. Because if God is not a noun, then it means that this energy that is called God, this letter G-O-D, that's a famous letter in German, it means good, like something nice. Okay. These letters that represent this word, God, let's take the letters aside. Let's follow the vibration. Let's follow the frequency. What is truly this energy? And how can we truly assess this? 
You see what you know has God. This is a strong supreme energy that is now split into different, different pieces. You can call that an atom. That is now splitted into different, different pieces. When I say splitted, I mean completely splitted. Which means God is an expression of our own self that is manifesting our own self within our own self. I will repeat it again. The meaning of God is a divine expression of a self that is manifesting herself within her own self. So if she is the consciousness of herself, which means you can't see her. Because why? When you look, she's looking at you. Those your eyes, she owns it. So when you touch, she's touching through you. So you cannot touch her because she remains the constant conscious self that is always being aware of her own essence. So because she is that, you can't structure that into an image. You can't structure that into an object. You can't structure that <laughs> into a man or a woman. It can't be done because she is the complete consciousness of her own self that is expressing her own self within her own self. In case it's complicated for you, need try and break her head down. Any try any time I worry where you cannot see your own eyeball without looking at a mirror. Tell me, can you see your own eyeballs <laughs> without you having any image or anything in your front that is reflecting them? No, never. That's exactly how God is. That's why you don't waste your time to look for God. You don't waste your time to be God. You don't waste your time to, to sit by the side of God. That's a time that is being born away. But from the moment you understand that God is the supreme consciousness that is expressing herself within our own self, then that understanding, boom, we trigger, we come out. That understanding now is coming out based on the reality that if God is expressing and observing ourself within our own self, which means everything in existence is the expression of God. Everything alive is God. Everything you see, which means God is this big body that have splitted ourself I like to use the word her because of the divine feminine energy that keeps reproducing. That's already connects him, connect this energy to be feminine. That's why I use the word her. So, if she's that, and you and every other thing on earth is an expression of this, then it means that your brother living back of your house Regardless his character, regardless his attitude, regardless his behavior, he is still your brother. Because why? The same thing that you are reflecting is also the same thing that he is reflecting. Yes, life must have structured or conditioned their mind to be thinking different from you. But the fact is, Is still hidden within him. That growth force is still hidden within him. So when you see your brother, when you see your sister, what you are seeing is God. When you see a tree, what you are seeing is God. 
When you see a bed, what you are seeing is God. When you see a fish, when you see land, when you feel the hair, when you see fire, when you see water, when you see the wood, when you see the when, when you see all these elements, this is a divine expression of God. So for you who wants to be a worshiper, before you look into a deep sky to search for a God, which you only know about through a book that was first start from the basic step what are the basic step connect to the tree in front of your house connect to the land you are standing on connect to the wind that is blowing past your ears connect to your brothers that is living in your streets connect to those your sisters around you connect to every living thing that is existing within you because the connection with these energies that exist within you is a complete is a complete uh, is, is a complete manifestation that you are connected to God. When you ignore everything that exists within you and think that God is one imaginary figure which you have to go on your knees and close your eyes to pray to, then what you are doing is that moment you close your eyes, that moment you package yourself in the box and put yourself aside. The earth keep functioning. The time keep on turning. Nothing stops for you because you are on your knees. Even the God you say you want to pray to will not pause the time for you first to first pray. You know why? Because... The expression of God does not understand what you want. Let me be using the word you will understand. Universe, God, however you understand it to be, does not care of what you want. What they care about is what you need. What you really need to excel. What you really need to progress. What you really need to tap into that infinite reality that is waiting for you. These are the things your soul, these are the ingredients your soul is searching for. These are the ingredients your soul is more interested for. Your soul don't really care if you want to have a rough stress. Of course, it's nice, it's good, it's good, it's good. Ego wants that. Your soul is not interested. So it's good to have your rough stress, but then you have to know that balancing what your soul needs first is what gives you the right to even own your own estate. But if you go for those things and ignore your soul, then you will always be carrying a trauma within your own self, which you will always feel, even if everybody around you is like, ha ha, it's good. You know what you feel within yourself. But what I'm trying to share here with you is, the true nature of God is love. The true and only nature of God is love. Love and to serve. Some people don't understand. God is always in service. God is always humble. God is always lovely. Because those are the packages of love anyway. <laughs> when, you love, when, you are, when you are love, you will always be humble and loyal. That's what, those are the things that goes with love. So God is always this. So for you to connect to God, you have to know these things also. For you to connect to God, you have to understand all these things. Because just thinking that God is something private, like my personal thing, I have my God. <laughs> Every year, some Africans or people, everything I say, my God, oh, my God. Oh. What makes you think you have your God and another person have their God? The thing that makes you think that is because somebody has conditioned you. Somebody has programmed you to think that you are this, I'm a Christian, and this is our almighty God. I am a Muslim. This is our almighty Allah. I am a Buddhist. This is my supreme Buddha. I am a monk. I am this. I am this. I am that. You see that word, I am. That word, I am, is existing because of your ego. 
The soul have no gender. The soul have no identity. It's the duty of the ego to give the soul name. It's the duty of the ego to give the soul everything. So in this case, you can call the ego your mind. Because your mind now is the continuous illusionist that keep on creating a self-identity of and keep on projecting that self-identity to be what you are. That's why when you stop a man in the street, hello, good afternoon. What is your name? He will tell you his name. Who are you? Then you will start hearing, I am a doctor, I have PhD, I have master degree, I am a father, I have a car, I have a company. You start hearing, I have, I have, I am, I am, I have. Those things are beautiful, they are good. But what I'm trying to uh, show you here is without the presence of your ego, you are formless. And those identities are not really yours. But when you are operating in the true nature of God, then you will understand that you are nothing but love. Love is what you are. Love is what... It's what you breathe. Love is what you eat. You might not be conscious of this love. But that mm -hmm. is what it is. You don't raise your head to look at this moon. Does not mean That's exactly the same way it is. So we should all understand that the, nat the true nature of God is love. And for we to be able to make our land great again, we all have to start practicing love. We all have to start showing love. We all have to let love become our new religion. We all have to let love become our new practice. So many of us today are so, are so, are so in love with our history. Why? Because our ancestors, they did so many things selflessly. Meaning they never think about themselves while they were doing these things. They never take themselves like, huh? before they do these things. Many even sacrifice their life for our land. Many go to war knowing they will not come back. Many did a lot of sacrifice that was able to build the ancient Bini Empire, which the whole world is studying about today. This who their heart was full of love for their land. So love becomes the only tools of greatness, the only tools of unity, the only tools of of expanding that big consciousness of God himself. This is God for you. Good evening, good evening everyone. Our problem started when we leave the God we said before the white man came. Why are we leaving what we know and go for another man's God? Be realistic, think, please, thanks. What you wrote makes a lot of sense. Make a lot of sense. Uh, I, I start blaming our people for leaving what they serve and go for what the white man brought. I start blaming them because why? I now notice that we will waste too many time if we keep on blaming. That's the fact. That's the secret I found out. We will waste too many time if we keep on blaming ah, why you follow the God white man bring or why you don't follow the God your ancestors serve, we will waste too many time in this. So what I see is very important now, that's what I do now, is building a bridge. Is building a bridge. That same thing white man bring, it's time we show our people the pure beauty. If you are a Christian, no problem. Then we have to teach you the real essence of a true christian if you are in islam you are muslim no problem the real essence of peace and how to practice your day-to-day -day life in a peaceful manner so 
we will be more successful easily to teach them how to master their own religion than to try and draft them back. Why do I use that word? The place we are drafting them to is so, so chaotic. This is the reality. Africa's spiritual system has been hijacked by greedy people and selfish people. So this makes everything so chaotic. That's why all those pastors in Africa, they are all winning. <laughs> they are all winning and taking a lot of uh, the souls of our people. Because why? Many of them don't have any option where to turn their face to. So what we are not sharing with everybody is, like I always say, you can keep your God. That's not a problem for me. But what is important for me is, you must understand the nature of that God you are keeping. When you don't understand the nature of that God, then you become toxic to the society. Because every single religion on earth teach about love. Yes, we can argue with that people that bring the religion, uh, they, many of them are gangsters, criminals, rapists, blah, blah, blah. We know their history. Don't need to waste energy in that. But what is important is, if I give you a knife and tell you, stick this knife in your throat, and you will start seeing very well. You have to use your common sense to think, how can a sharp object like this in my throat help me to see? Will I not bleed <laughs> or get drowned of my own blood? You have to start thinking. So it is the nature of the universe for someone to always profit from someone. It is the nature for people to always attack people. It is the nature of the universe for people to always hate you. It is the nature of the universe for wanting to always go against another thing. That's why when the big tree falls, it breaks the smaller tree. This is how universe, God, whatever people understand it to be, this is how they structure everything. Mm -hmm. But it is our individual duty to learn how to protect ourselves, to learn how to save ourselves, to learn how to preserve ourselves. So what I'm trying to share this evening is the only way we can out our greatness as a people is to start knowing love, is to start really practicing love mm -hmm. and when i say love i am talking about a genuine love when i say love i am talking about pure love you can't say you want to love someone and you end up insulting the person you can't say you want to give someone love and you end up hating them and or fighting them or jumping on them. That's not how. That's not how you share love. That's not how you give love. To give genuine love, you must learn how to accept people. I see some people these days, they claim they want to help you. But they can't insult you. They go insult you, insult you, insult you, insult you, insult you. You can put I say, I wish can help self. This, <laughs> this man won't give me. Which can help self. This woman won't give me. They will just fair pieces you. They at the end, even when they give you the help, you are stuck in between the two decisions. Should I take it or should I just tell this person to go away? It's not your fault. It's because the person never really show you genuine love. So when I say God is love, I'm not just talking about love. I mean pure love, sacred love, a love that is so, so genuine, a love that don't carry any judgment, a love that don't carry any discrimination, a love that don't know any boundary. I like the way my voice always echo in this forest. I like it how the tree always uh -huh. feel my presence when I'm here. 
Because when I talk, I hear it again. So that's for me so beautiful. So as I was saying anyway, that pure, genuine love is something we have to tap into. That pure, genuine love is something we have to start teaching our children now. Because the point still, the fact still remains that many of our people are so toxic that they have so as transformed into a dark soul. Umami ano kinu yon non bi kin and or ni. Now only what you want to destroy the land, neither they interested on. If you want to tell any better gist, better story, better news of how the land go take grow, how the land go take sell, they know they get interest. If I am your boy, but we are come one win yer na high gadona or yon a mata gagbata, they are very valuable. They can drive from Paris to Berlin just because they want gossip. They can drive from Lagos to Bini just because they want to uh, Tafia. Yes, those are the, the dark souls, Orionong Bikni. And those dark souls, because all their life, they have always absorbed negative and toxic energies. So now they are not poison. They are not just poison to you. They are also poison to their own selves. This is our sad reality. The, 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 the sad thing is we have so many of these people. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, uh, for we to really start fixing our land, we need cleansing. When I say cleansing, like real, real rough cleansing. Rough one. A lot of people have to go. That's the fact. You may not like to hear it, but this is the only solution. Uh, so to really cleanse our land, we need... We need first to just be as a sovereign nation. Then we'll create our own law and we'll clean our land. When I say clean, like from, from north to east, from east to west, south to south, everywhere. We'll clean everywhere. Then those who nothing can live according to the rules and regulation of the Benin kingdom, go pack their load, come up for our kingdom. Because we cannot keep on keeping people within our midst that are not toxic. What makes a lot of chaos in Edo land today, people are not paying attention to it. But I always talk about it and I will keep on talking about it because I know what I talk about. I don't just talk. I talk because I know and I see what I talk about. One of the biggest problems in Edo, in Edo, in one of the biggest problems in here, do me. No, no, here they tell me I am because so that they can be know our problem. One of the biggest problem we have in Benin Kingdom today is Benin Kingdom was like the ancient Frankfurt, was like the ancient Paris, was like the ancient New York. Why do I use this way, uh, these new cities to compare Beniki? They are not up to our greatness in measurements. We are far greater than all the cities I mentioned. But why do I use them as an example? You see the way trade and commerce and international uh, 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 transit is going on. Like Frankfurt now, one of the most biggest airports in Europe. Why all this transit is going on? That was how many dukes many chiefs, many dukes from different lands far away always come to Bini Kingdom. Some come to the kingdom to bring uh, home, to come and pay homage to the Oba. Some come to Bini Kingdom to come and buy. Some come to Bini Kingdom to come and sell. Some come to Bini Kingdom so they can have contact with the white man. Don't forget Bini Kingdom. These are one of the few people in uh, the whole of West Africa who first having contact with the, Est with the Europeans. So many reasons was there why different people from all over the sub-Sahara regions was coming to Africa, uh, Benin Kingdom. And these people that was coming, as well as they, some of them come with their own slaves, which we don't even know where they come from. Some would not come with their own children. Because in that ancient days, it was a pride for a duke in a land far away 
to marry a daughter to any citizen of Edo. Because don't forget, we, we the Edo people, we carry a, an ancient royal bloodline. So in this ancient time, it was like a pride for, for a going, a going mean strangers. It was like a pride for strangers to marry us. It was like a pride for a strangers to have anything to do with us. It was a pride for even a stranger to sleep with our own sons. For them, it's like, wow, jackpot. So just see Biniki don't like the, uh, <laughs> just see Biniki don't like where uh, a country was having the most strongest passport in the whole of Africa. <laughs> just see it like that. <laughs> so these interactions was what keep making people in traffic to be in Benin Kingdom. And during this process, a, a duke that come from a faraway land, we said to a fellow dukes, most of the time was not even the others. It was the dukes, the Dionwere, uh, the, the, the warriors, the chief priests, the high priests. Don't forget Benin Kingdom. Uh, the hierarchies have different, different office. If you have seen the traditional power tabella, you will see all the hierarchies. We have uh, the Oba representing God. We have all the different, different hierarchies below. It's like, it's a very perfect structure. Not it's like, it's a perfect structure. So those that could even have like a contact with a tank crier, they are always happy. Because why? A tank crier from Benin Kingdom, when he go to a foreign land, he just have the same power as a duke. Just because he is a Benin alone. So every Benin son is like a is a priest, not like a is a just a wagging is is a priest. So as you are a Benin son, you become a priest and a warrior. What makes you a priest mm -hmm. as a Benin first son? Then as you become the first son of your father's home, those responsibility of your ancestral altar, your ancestral worship falls onto you. That automatically now make you a priest, a custodian of the family, of the family shrine. So what I'm trying to say is this. From the ancient Benin kingdom, we are not just ordinary people. These are special groups of people. And a lot of people, we go to as far as any length to have our friendship. We go as far as any length to connect with us. We go as far as any length to have anything that have to do with us. That was important for them because So that was how it has always been. And those process, we must not ignore it. They don't have a positive side, the negative side, the are. You see, those are our greatness. The way people so much wish to be one of us, the way people so much wish to be close to us. All those greatness now creates avenue for we to welcome different, different, different people, including toxic people. People that will even commit abomination, they will not say it out. From there, they will not do what is needed. But if you going away, no That was how the Benin. That was how the Benins were invaded. I use the word invasion because we are a special soul tribe and uh, our blood is so sacred. Very, very sacred. Very sacred. Even very describe it, but let me put another one very sacred. So those different people we welcome into the cycle, 
Et il y a polluté hier d'eau, ni bon. Il y a de polluté de land. So if we want to make our land great again today, we need to filter all this. We must filter this because why? We are a priesthood society. Let me rephrase it again. Then do they be explaining any real priesthood in me? We are a priesthood society. What I mean by that is every Edo man and woman is a spiritual is a spiritual entity that is just manifesting herself. So when you are born, you are born with a lot of energies. You are born with or say any via do I must look at would I will marry more born walking or see where I am in Wahine, Yaya Mag Benua, or say Uwakian Nigby, where I only will get the area Eugenua, why an eggby? Because you were you are all born with something very extraordinary, you are all born with something very great. Yes, we know right now. I think what you have. Some pastor told you you are possessed. This is family juju. This is this. Different reason. I make many of you now wage a war within yourself. Nibu wa mani ya kinya wa mani ya vyori agmo. Beta agwe honku. Agwe honku because you don't. You have never been teach how to have dialogue with the energy that come with you to life. Nobody has ever teach you that. You have never been teach of how to connect to this energy that come with you to life. Nobody has ever teach you that. Many of you are they don't teach you. They just take your money. No, it's not yare yare. It doesn't stop there. From the moment you initiate, or now this is for the Oyan, for the Obu. For the moment you initiate our children, the moment you have to start teaching them what you have done. Because when you don't teach them what have just happened, and you don't lecture them what is Oisango, you don't lecture them what is Olokun, is connected to Olokun, that same person, two years later, all the baby be built there, because why? He thinks that what she have done is fetish. She thinks that this thing she's doing is against is against the will of God because why she don't understand the true nature of God and how God is truly expressing herself and you never teach her that. I say, may you blame me, yeah, woman. We all have work to do. That's why I tell people, let's stop the blame game and start getting busy. <laughs> we have to start getting busy. That's the only way. But what I'm trying to share here with you today is, regardless what your spiritual orientation is, understanding the science and the nature of God is what helps you to start having peace. Why are you always doing your video inside bush? <laughs> so I can be in the bush, I can be in the water. <laughs> I can be everywhere. Only in the fire I cannot go to. But that was a very cool question. And I live in the forest. My house is just three minutes away. So we have forest and river. That's all we have here. And I love it. Okay, our ancestors are blessing us day and night. So, Baga talk there. He said, he said, he said, Okuta. He said, many of our people don't have no idea of what our ancestors is and how they are really blessing us. On a very good day, I will dedicate a special day for that because people, how all these things are connected. When you understand how they are connected, then you belong. Then you will know where you belong. Science is teaching people every day about your DNA. What is your DNA? 
This is the, like a blueprint of your soul, which means your soul have always been a journey. And that journey is a continuous expansion mm -hmm. from one of yourself to another of yourself, from one of yourself to another of yourself. So when you duplicate outside of your own self, the one you leave behind now is also you. Mm -hmm. And that one is experiencing and surviving in a realm which you don't have access to. So in another word, your ancestors are here to keep the spiritual balance for you. Now then be your angels where you don't know about. But I don't blame you because people don't show you paintings of what angels look like. So you believe say they have to get white feather. <laughs> you believe say they have to get white feather and all those, all those European paintings. But I understand we know what has been done to you so no problem. We, we, we have patience with you. It's a church wedding. <laughs> I'm just trying to read the comment. People always tell me you don't read comment, you don't read comment. Church wedding and cut wedding are white men tradition. But today now we carry a pass for it. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame them, my dear. A lot of things was done to us. It's a psychological warfare. Domon Salavia Ze Obota Obota. It's a psychological warfare. So we cannot be blaming our people. Just see mm -hmm. our people like uh, pass away. We know where. You know if you go to blame you know where say they sick. Not be fought. You know one sick. It just it just happened. It just happened. So we must take it easy with our own selves. Where is this? And uh, this is Mezog and, and Schwanerda Christ. It's like the middle of Germany. We are like three hours away from Frankfurt here. Yeah. Okay, so what is really important is understanding that God is love and love is God. And everything in existence is an expression of God. Everything you see in existence is what is reflecting God. Which means when you press and push everything on this earth together, that's where you find God from. When you push and press everything that is in this universe together, that is God there. Which means one thing is not God. As I am loving this tree, I have to also love this tree. Because both of them are connected. As you are loving your son, you have to love your daughter. As you are loving your daughter, you have to love any other young girl you see out there. As you are loving your wife, you have to love your mother. As you are loving your mother, you have to also love every other woman you see out there. You have to love all the birds. You have to love your fellow brothers. You have to love what is existing in this reality. Because that you see with your eyes is a reflection of God. So don't have, don't have a tread for your blood brothers or have a thread for your relation regardless their character but don't have a thread for them and then you claim you love God don't have a thread for the for the environment you live on that has a disrespect for the mother earth when you are doing that, it means you are not even connected to the earth. Because if you are connected to the earth, you will know that you are not just supposed to throw dirty on the ground as you are walking. Because why do you do that? You don't have awareness. When you have awareness, you will not know this is a ground. This is where it carries all my weights. This is where I stand on. I am connected. I am planted. So it's my duty to also take care of this. So awareness and the consciousness of self is what really help you to connect to the true nature of god don't forget like i said before god is not a noun god is a frequency so the vibration you carry is what help you tap into this frequency the more you pay attention the more you listen you the more you keep observing, the more you are having patience. How much patience do you have? Well, I go and so go on the phone. If you slow down, they know the fee bearer. No, have patience. 
create silence of the mind. Pay attention to all those little details. God not say, may you come they need down, they pray for her. God not ask anybody to do all those things. God tell you, may you appreciate all that you see around you. That is how you tell God, say, I love you. That is how you worship God. If you think Senator Bago sit down for one, uh, one house where they build like a square bus fence around and people they shout, they make noise. If you think Senator just only like that, they say they connect to God, then you are still, you have, you have been tricked. They have scammed you. Because why? God is not interested in noise. God don't like noise. Tell your pastor now, now Dr. Guname Tokan, God don't like noise. You know why God don't like noise? When there is too much noise around you, then you cannot hear the voice of God. And God hates to speak to you when you don't hear him speak to you. <laughs> so you need to have the silence of the mind. When I say noise, I'm not really talking only about your radio or your television. That voice is way full inside your head. Where not they take break. Where they continue, they make rook, 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 rook. every second different thought. Those noise are distraction. So your first mission now is to master your mind. When you can master your mind, control your thoughts. No way till they reasonable to think about. I like this place a lot. A deer always come there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a uh, roe. They always because this forest deer, bush pig, and uh, rabbits now then food this forest. Uh, so every time I always see deer, there's any time I pass out, they always look. But what I'm trying to share is this really understanding that the silence of your mind is what helps you to hear the voice of God. So try and master the mind your mind is your devil your mind is your god your mind is your greatest enemy if you can win the battle of your mind hmm you can the heaven that heaven where they show you the picture now lie nothing there exists like that too heaven and the state of your mind poverty is Happiness is a state of your mind. This is not something anybody can just give to you. Even if Dan Gotti appear for your front, give you 100 billion naira. If you don't have happiness in your mind, you will still not be happy. <laughs> Some will say, nah, lie. <laughs> you know it, see that one. No worry, go talk to people who don't make big money. They will tell you it. They will confirm to you it and they share these things no no guarantee your happiness. After you don't build your first house, you want to rush the second, you want to rush the third one. When you come build the fourth, you can say muja 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 muja. Have you got any name? Where was your sin? Yeah yeah okay. Hey, both one and a half. What what soon? What what you like? Yeah, what? You can't even feel stupid saying you build many houses. <laughs> Why would never build go go the go the wish say you have to build one? But you will not get three hours because they say no 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 no. I need to invest. Building houses is a waste of money. <laughs> it's a waste of money. I need to invest as far as I rent, 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 I go abalu 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 wakian wa we real estate business. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm trying to share with you today is this. Pay more attention to the things that your mind is being attracted to. Pay more attention to the things that can take your attention. Because you know why I'm giving you these two points. What can attract you, what can take your mind away, is the only thing that can structure your life. So if you sit down in your house, reflect, what are the things that interest your life, that interest mm -hmm. your mind? What are the things that, that easily take your mind away? Pay attention to those things and then fit tight. See if there are really things that what taking your attention see if there are really things 
that <laughs> that really have contribution to your own growth see if these are really things that can really help you to expand you have to see these things when you don't see these things then you become like a dog who always follow the smell like dogs then you become like that and then your thoughts become like that cheese that the rat is always looking for then you will always feel restless then you will always feel unhappy because is a continued bell that is ringing in your front and you are walking and following it or say well, why me so they are not relaxed if you ask them why are you not relaxed they will tell you huh a problem a problem those are excuses <laughs> those are excuses there's always an excuse but the fact is you can never relax in your mind you can never relax in your life until you know how to control your own thoughts. Let's say you sit down now. Observe the way your thoughts are coming into your head. Observe what is coming. Observe how it comes and goes. Observe how you connect with the things that are coming. The girl of the person on the fish said trap for you. Yeah, I for all key, key many of <laughs> for this and the bar finish. <laughs> yeah. Observe all those thoughts. Observe what carries your mind away. When you can pay attention to your thoughts and you can have patience to face the demon and you can have patience to stand in front of the devil itself <laughs> then you have the infinite power to master everything when i say everything i mean everything because for as long as you cannot pay attention <laughs> to your own thoughts, that means there is a beast in you that you are running from. There is a part of you that you are in always in conflict with. And that will always make you feel restless. That's where you now see a lot of people that need cigarettes. They need alcohol. They need drugs. They need different, different pills to escape this. Because why? The society now make you believe that since you cannot... My most favorite spot. So my house is down there. So I sit here before it finally get completely dark. The society... Now make you believe that for as long as you are scared of your thoughts, they can help you go over it. That is a big lie. That is a very big lie. They are not helping you to go over it with other substance. <laughs> they are not helping you to go over it with those liquid. They are not helping you to go over it with those herbs. What they are doing is blinding and killing your own sense of feeling and understanding. So which means those things are still existing. You are just not being aware of it anymore. Which is very dangerous for your soul. And that's exactly the reason why. Today you will drink, drink, drink. You will get drunk. You will sleep off. You will be like all the pains are over. It's like everything is okay. You are in paradise. 
But tomorrow morning you wake up, <laughs> the senti go knock for your, <laughs> the senti go knock for your head again. Then instantly you they run now. You want to go buy the next bottle of drink because you believe that for as long as you can drink, you can always escape your pains. You believe that as long as you can smoke, you can always overcome those pains. You believe for as long as you sniff, you can always jump all those gutter. My dear, those are a false and a limited self self-sabotaging comforts that the mind have creates don't forget i say the mind is an illusionist a job one of our jobs is to always create different illusions that's why you just sit down sometimes for those who never master their their mind of course you just sit down sometimes, go be like say movie, they go, <laughs> they go on inside your head. You see this, you see this, you, all this in your own head. So your head is just busy, same way a radio station is busy. And some of you still wonder why, why, why. So many think you have to do other things to distract yourself from that thoughts. Meanwhile, in reality, you don't need to run from your own thoughts. You need to face it. The more you keep facing it, when I say face it with your lucid eye, with your clear mind, not with any pure or alcohol or anything. No, not with any substance. With pure mind, face your demon. All those thoughts, always wash them like a bird that is flying. They'll perch for your head, the head will still fly, come on. So the more you keep doing that simple exercise, the more you will not decide which of the bed go to fly, the perch on your head, and which of the them, which of them you go let it go. That's how you start mastering your own thoughts. If you just only pay attention to, huh, mm -hmm. huh, I have to run, I have to run, you will always run. And you will always wonder why you can't stop running. But these are very important because all these connect with the, nat with the true nature of God. God sometimes needs to discipline you. Which means some of those situations, some of those things you are, you are seeing as a problem... It's not really a problem. Some of them are just there to call your attention to something that is very important. So before you ask God, why I did this problem? Why this thing happened to me? Before you have God, ask God why. Then, first ask God, what? What is the lesson for me to learn from this situation? What is the lesson for me to learn from this divorce? For me to learn from this fight of property they are fighting with me? What is the lesson for me to learn from my girlfriend that's always screaming? What is the lesson to learn from this child that don't take and that don't take any advice from me as her mother? What is it to learn from this difficulty situation? That is the first question. Don't just jump that one and start asking God why. That's why God don't answer you and tell you why. And you think God don't hear you. He hear you, you are just not asking the right questions. Because why? For a condition or a situation to happen to you, it is all connected. It is all, all packaged happening most times to help you grow out of that position you have. Sometimes it's happening to help you expand your mind. Some time ago, I did a very beautiful teaching about the beauty of pains and how we can make use of our pain. Because we are living in a society today where everything is being judged. 
everything is being labeled so when it's not like this it seems like it's not right no 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 you have to calm down you have to calm down and slow down then you have to sit down and ask your god what is your own role on earth because it doesn't mean because you are a woman you must marry you must make have children it seems like uh oh oh you have to know what you are you have to know your own contribution to humanity before you think your life is useless because some of you are the ones sabotaging yourself with your own thoughts thinking that something is not right with you thinking that something is wrong with you just because why fits exactly as that of mr a or does not look exactly like that mr b focus on your own life and try to bring the bring out the best now from that your own life which you focus on so understanding the true nature of god and knowing that love is the expression of god himself so before you talk to anybody talk love before you speak to anybody speak love before you do anything with anybody do love make love not war regardless where the person come from try to build a secure atmosphere where you can both exchange interact with each other without being a problem to one another so love is the true nature of god and for you to fully serve god you must practice love not just to your boyfriend to your girlfriend to your children or family you must practice love to everything in existence when i say everything i mean including that small rat with inside your house not your sin i say i don't know what i bust eh? <laughs> some people are so heartless the king sent as if now nah, this sent not be the problem but what i'm trying to share with you is share love with everything the more you practice your day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. and package it with love the more your deep internal transformation will start you see all those prayers wow Go <laughs> see no wrong comments. That's nice idea. I see. The more you practice, the more you practice your day-to-day -day life with love, the more you the, the, the more you see the deep transformation that starts going on within you. So please feel free to ask any question. I'm trying to read some comment now. He said, you are very correct. Ah, thank you, Mr. David Osa. Oh, sorry, Mrs. David Osa. That's true because clearing. That's true because clearingness is, is nest of godliness. Ah, so cleanliness. Ah, okay. Clearingness is nest of godliness. Okay, maybe I understand you right. Good evening, my wonderful brother. Happy weekend, more grace. Ah, good evening. Thank you. Thank you. We are having a very wonderful warm weekend over here today. It's so beautiful. I have experienced it, brother. <laughs> ah, thank you. It's good. I'm happy for you. Bro, what about drinking alcohol? <laughs> alcohol is toxic to the spirit. The more you drink alcohol, the weaker your spirit is. So if you love your spirit, I don't say banned alcohol. But at least give yourself the right dose. Give yourself the right dose. The same thing with smoking. The same thing with everything. Give yourself the right dose. When you have the right dose that work with you, then it's good. But if you don't know how to control the dose, then stay out of it. Because alcohol is spirits. And they call it spirit for a reason. Even carrying his own spirit. To me, I am a traditional man. I don't believe in cut wedding. I believe in tradition. Yeah, every normal uh, African man who is wise and awoken will not do all those things. All you need is a woman that share your same of thinking. Then you don't even have to have those problems. 
The money problem we have today, many of our brothers, they want to marry because of beauty. They want to marry because how they think how now this one now he just now so I want to make it look like. No, no, no. You don't marry based on how you want a woman to look like. You marry based on the woman who reflects your own personality. That's why a lot of uh, uh, marriages today are so empty. It's not grounded because nothing really bound the both people. Some of the women marry you because you know, say you feel take very good care of her. I know it's not all, but majority is like that. Uh, why, is, <laughs> why from the men's side, many marry because oh, they think, wow, she's very, very beautiful. They look for a woman in go fit, go to the show up for public. <laughs> so at the end, after one or two years together, they are two go hate each other, they're tired of each other. So wise people don't marry based on your profession or your salary or how your body look like. Wise people marry based on how you connect with them and how your thinking is connected. Like I always tell people to just say, I love you, I love you, I love you. It's not enough. It's not enough. Love is not enough when it comes to marriage. They have to be deeper than that. It has to be complete reflection of two individual self. This is something of a lifetime. And if you want to live your full life with someone, it has to be somebody that is a complete reflection of yourself. I will say, okay, I will marry my second wife. I will marry my second wife. Let me say, I want to marry my second wife tomorrow now. I cannot marry a woman who every day all disturb me. No, 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 no. That's a distraction. You need a woman that we, wherever you are doing, they will stay there by your side and be doing it with you. If not, you will just use your hand, go to the market, buy stress, carry on your own house. As a normal man, not even everybody is supposed to have access to your life. Everybody, <laughs> this is the area where I become very strict. Anyone that have to have access to your life need to be people that carry your same type of energy or people who are ready to learn from you or people who you want to learn from. There must be an exchange. So don't just keep toxic people in your life and later you complain why your life is not going the way you really uh, expect or want it to be. Traditional style is the best. <laughs> Traditional a marriage is something very special. People still have to understand what we do uh, uh, when it comes to tradi our traditional marriage. Maybe on a very special day, we will we'll talk about the sacred union there. Because our tradition is so perfectly designed that when a man is marrying a woman, it's not just a marriage, it's a ritual. It's a ritual. It's something very special. Is something very sacred and it's something very spiritual and divine. It's even deeper than a marriage. So, uh, problem or uh, many families are not grounded anymore. Many families are not grounded anymore. Everybody just like a dry leaf. Many are not grounded anymore. And that's why. How are you? I forgot to make... Ah, okay, no problem. I'll reply your message later. And that's why you see a lot of chaos in our society today. So, uh, one of my advice always to our people is one of the few steps to start making our land great again is to first really re-educating and teaching our people what we are doing, what our ancestors were doing, why they were doing it, and how it connects to the cosmological order. Because when you don't understand the cosmological law, then you will just think your ancestors just a play. They don't really know anything. Because why? You are stuck now in a reality where everything is fantasy. Where everything is man-made. That's like all these trees they see now. They plant all of them. <laughs> so, when you are stuck in that type of reality, you will not know how vast and deep and special your ancestors really were. 
So really knowing those things are very important. Our traditional marriage is deeper than just a marriage. Mm -hmm. It's deeper than just a marriage. Especially when the, the, the person you are marrying is coming from another tribe. Then it becomes even more sacred. We think Bini Bini, yeah, we still understand. Yeah, but that's a topic for another day. Today, my real point of really coming out today is to share with all our beloved brothers and sisters, God is love, a, go a love is God. The both things are not separated. So don't talk about God when you don't love anybody. Don't talk about God when you cannot love your own land. Don't say you are a Christian or you are a Muslim when you don't respect your tradition and culture. You are this and because of that you, you push away what you have. That does not make sense. God is an expression of everything in existence. Everything you see in existence is God expressing herself through our own self. So there is nothing you can take outside of God. So even what you call evil, what you call good, what you call bad, what you call this, what you call that, mm -hmm. everything is existing within the reality now known as God. So this is really important for we all to know. Because if you mm -hmm. keep separating God from your day-to-day -day reality and think God is one place you go to on Sunday or think God is one uh, is just only in that shrine you sit in or think God is just in that wood you think you 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 you, you used to pray then you are disconnecting yourself from God every day so understanding that God is everywhere understanding that God is everything this is what matters and with this thought with this thinking with this mindset is where you start now hmm. It's where you start now, building that deep intimacy within you and this great supreme being, energy, or whatever you understand it to be. So that separation must not be there. Find love, and then you have God. Find love, and then you have God. Give love, and then you have God. Don't worry, nothing like air fire, nothing like heaven. Everything here is what goes on in your mind. Your hair fire is here. Your heaven is here. It's all existing in your state of mind. When they were telling you about those books, they were hiding the code and they use a story, allegory story, to explain a code to you. What they were giving you were some sacred code. On a very good day, if I'm permitted, of course, because uh, this is not my personal, my personal face, but I always play around anytime I like. But this yeah, uh, kind of very, very uh, sensitive. But if I'm permitted, I uh, I will I will start doing like a teaching of the Bible here, like really explaining the esoteric knowledge, the esoteric knowledge behind those stories. Because many of our people don't have no clue of this. So that's why they always believe when they hear <laughs> when they hear Jesus, some think he's a man. They always have this image of Michelangelo, that picture that was painted. <laughs> they always have this image and use it as a concept of what he is. They don't know that what Europeans was trying to talk to them about <laughs> was a state of consciousness. But they have to hide it. They have to make you think he's a man. Jesus is a state of consciousness. God is a frequency. These are not man. These are not flesh. These are not nothing like that. So what, what humans have done now is they have created God in their own image and they are lying that God created them in his own image. You see how humans have, <laughs> have messed up themselves? Well, that's a discussion for a very separate, for a very different day but when you start having a satiric knowledge then you start understanding the deep the deep secret code bible is a code 
is a book of code. It's not just a book you just sit down, ha, ha, ha. You think you just read it. No, 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 no. If you read it like that, what you are doing is you are just reading a fairy tale. You are reading a beautiful story. If you really want to understand the knowledge behind Bible, you have to read in between the lines. Read it between the lines. Turn it around. Then you will see the pin code. All the codes are there. But before you start understanding it, you need a school. You need a special mm -hmm. school. You need a special school that can teach you of how to uncode and decode all those codes. So that's why now many Africans are enslaving themselves because they are believing in a book which they have absolutely no idea of what it is really. So now they make, you just leave your lot to be running the program yourself. We know all what have been done. We know the level of the damage the psychological warfare have caused, but we don't want to focus there because we will waste more energy in trying to let you know how badly you are hurt instead of fixing you little by little. That's why you keep hearing me saying, keep your religion. It's not that I don't know that many of the religion are toxic to your soul but i keep saying it to make you feel comfortable in your comfort zone so that my message can still reach you because if i attack your religion you will dislike me <laughs> and not be your fault to dislike me that is how the mind has been programmed to push away anything that does not resonate with the installation of what is running we understand how what was done so no problem, we are patient. <laughs> we are patient. So really understanding that God is love is very important. So from today, when you go to your home, you go to Bini or anywhere you live, start showing love. Ego mage, hmm, when I walk been wearing this one on rich, this one dirty. Ah, this one on wear better clothes. Ah, see the car where this one they use serve. Ah, see as his wife fine. Ah, see as his wife ugly. Ah, see as his bikini short. Ah, no, start seeing everything with with that sacred eyes of yours, mm -hmm. and know that everything is reflecting you, and you yourself is also a reflection of God. So when you start viewing everything like this, what you are really where Omar Omar I'm always shocked because anytime I I always like to walk around all those ring road Olia Agbado. I like to always walk around with uh, barefoot in all those public places. But what I always don't like is we what you not ordinary, I mean conductor. Uh, who is supposed to be very calm? Oh, what ye bono? Because uh, uh, you won't pass, you know, you stand. Oh, what ye bono? People don't have that sense of connection within one another. It's just like, no, 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 no. That's not how life is. The act of you having patience for that old woman to go first, that is love. The art of you slowing down and say it's okay, brother. Don't worry. I will sit down inside the bus. May you sit down for near door. If not that one you like. That is love. And these little little things is what God is really interested about. God don't care if you are present in church 365 days. God is not marking a registry of who come, who did not come. No. What comes out of your mind? What you think and how you how you act behind what you think because sometimes you may think to kiss someone but you don't kill the person in reality so what you think and what your actions is these are the things god care about so that is really what i want to share with everybody i said it's a quick one but at the end it's not quick anymore so i thank you all i wish you a nice evening week runs out uh, i'm going to be talking more about the role of our ancestors i mean spiritually anytime you see me here always not connected to spiritual topic <laughs> so that's for you to just know already so the role of our ancestors and what is expected of all of us 
because I don't think <laughs> our ancestors did all this great thing. So now, be well now, you're not to come here, sit down, they look. No, you get work to do also. That's why they even born you. If not, you're not even supposed to be here. So, you they're not born, you may you come, they build 10, 10 houses, they marry 100 wives, they born 30 children. No, it's deeper than that. Those are good, those are good, those are like bonus of life. But your real mission here is deeper than that. And next time we'll be really focusing on those areas. So I thank you all this evening. I send you all, uh, Nika Tionane. Mr. Peter, where God hide his glory in his creation. He created mankind, vegetation, relief, and other creations. Their positive activities is the expression of God's glory. Mm. That's beautiful. I don't use the word is, I use she. <laughs> but it's okay, that's your opinion. Uh, yes, everything is expressing the beauty of God. I use the word she because I call God a woman. Why I call God a woman is because of this constant feminine energy that keeps governing the universe that always in the process of births, in the process of recreation. And the only facts and evidence we have physically to describe that energy is what we call woman today. So when I address God, I always use her, she. Because if God is a is a if God is a is a is a is a object or a person or a gender thing, then it's a woman. So that's why we call God woman. Hello everyone. Okay, I think that is the last uh, comment. So I thank you all and uh, wish you all a very beautiful evening. Thank you for listening. Please try and share it and also let people know God is love and love is God. We will see each other very soon. I send everyone peace and love. Share it, share it, share it and don't stop and get tired of sharing it. Thank you very much. Wa Wa Bye bye.